Hey, Lamar Jackson, obviously Patrick Mahomes, Dak Prescott, Brack Parody, like, but Brock, let's, they're not winning because of him. He's not turning the ball over. He's managing the game. And if we were to put that in its own right as game managers, Brock, Parody, Tua Tonga Valoa, Jared Goff, and really Dak Prescott. Mm. These are game managers. They're, they're not difference makers. When Cam Newton said this. Move past the outfit for a second. Um, <laughs> he literally said in the year of 2023, where it's all about NFL backups, where is Cam? Not on an NFL roster, right? ESPN's Kimberly Martin had to respond. So he's talking about all these NFL game managers. He sounds like the people literally tweeting at me from their basement, like, get back in the kitchen. Like, it's like, you are at home watching me. Like, like just, just, just turn the TV off. Probably like, in the kitchen. <laughs> like, it, <laughs> it just sounds so <laughs> foolish. She's got a point. Dominic Foxworth would also see through it. I would say that... It's called Funky Friday. That's his podcast. He wants you to download, rate, and review. Yeah. He's saying some wild stuff so he can get on. Get right. up. So please do that man there a favor because that's absurd. He said Dak Prescott? When he said Dak's name, <laughs> I was like, he telling jokes. First right. of all. Look, I despise this dude, but he did say something that's true. Just stop talking to him. Yeah, we don't. When you give people attention, attention is currency. I don't give a damn what you do. You don't have to score every time. You just don't have to throw a pick every time either. If we're going to really call a spade a spade, a game manager is different than a game changer. Whether Cam believes it or not, that is what he is striving for by posting something like this. To their credit, Awful Announcing appeared to call out what many would deem a double standard. I could put it clearly like this. One of these players last year had reasons to make excuses and an opportunity to overcome them, and they did. That's Carson Wentz. He had plenty of reasons to That's find true. excuses for lack of success, yet he used it as an opportunity to, to rise above and prove his worth to his team, and he did that. And Dak Prescott had the same situation, guys. I'll go back to the Jets game. When they go on the road, and they're beat up, and he's beat up, and they're missing Tyron Smith, and they go out and lose and everyone wanted to caveat it with well he was missing his offensive lineman there's the bottom line because Stephen A to your guys point like the, the availability is a valid thing I can't argue that but at the end of the day when these decisions are made by organizations if we pay that person all that money can we afford to not have this player or that player or that player is he good enough and one guy has proven I can carry you and one guy has proven I need help that is as black and white as it needs to be. Then there was ESPN's Lewis Riddick weighing in on the Dan Patrick show. Is that a slight? Was it meant as a slight? Of course it's meant as a slight. Because, <laughs> you know, Cam sounds like somebody who, and I, and I like him. I, I, I like him. Every time I got a chance to talk to him, I've liked it. I like the guy. But Cam just sound Cam just, Cam comes off as like bitter, like, because he thinks he should still be playing. And, he, and, you know, you've often heard him talk about the fact that he's better than a lot of the quarterbacks that are still playing in the NFL. And sometimes when you have that kind of feeling, like your your opinions and your the lens through which you look at these guys becomes a little bit distorted and jaded, and and you say it in a way that kind of makes you feel better about where you're at, or rather, it kind of makes you it, it just makes you feel better, for lack of a better phrase here. More from Riddick in a moment. Let me just say, there is very few voices in sports media, let alone NFL media, that has the experience Lou Riddick does and gives you such an honest, refreshing perspective. His words have merit. What he says has substance. It is a joy to listen to him because not only does he put things in perspective, he does it professionally. And when he has to go in on somebody, he does. Whether it is in guest interviews like the Dan Patrick Show, whether it is studio broadcasts, from ESPN's headquarters, whether it is remote or whether it is doing cover commentary at college football games on Saturday night or NFL games as a fill-in for Monday night football. He is fantastic. And what he is saying rings true with a lot of NFL fans. I continue to have issues with this whole game manager versus we. Uh, this guy wins the game BS. Because then, look, I, I played in an era where 
I, here, here are the great quarterbacks I played against. All right. I played against Troy when Dallas was mowing down everybody in Dallas. I played against Elway when TD was going for 2,000 yards and they had McCaffrey and they had Shannon and they had all those dudes. I played against Joe and I played against Steve Young when they had Jerry Rice, John Taylor, Brent Jones, Ricky Waters, Roger Craig, et cetera, et cetera. You know what, what's interesting? I remember being a scout when – when uh, Peyton had Edrin and he had Marvin Harrison, he had Reggie Wayne, he had Dallas Clark. And I'm sitting there going, look, these guys then are now, these guys then and now were considered some of the greats to ever play the game. And they had Hall of Famers all around them. But we become drunk with this notion that unless you are throwing the foot, unless you're getting hit in the face, the receivers triple covered the windows an inch by an inch, and you threaded through a keyhole. You're not elite. You're not that great. And it's it's really Dan. It's become stupid. It's become stupid the way in which we are trying to individualize the game that we all know. The reason why we love it's because it's the greatest team sport ever. As we know. Newton has not played since the 2021 NFL season, where he completed just under 55 percent of his passes for less than 690 yards, only four tutties, five picks with Carolina. Cam has not been a significant difference maker since the 2018 season when he threw for nearly 3,400 yards and a TD ratio of 24 to 13 in Carolina. Now, while everyone piles on, pro Cam users had his back. Imagine if Camp Newton had prime Ezekiel Elliott, Amari Cooper, Des Bryant, C.D. Lamb, or the Cowboys offensive line during his peak years, or even the amount of talent the Cowboys have on defense. Let's be serious here, man. It's a half-truth, by the way, because Dak Prescott did not have all of these guys for lengthy periods of time. It's a bit nitpicky, but I pick up what you're putting down. On Speak, one analyst essentially said, imagine Cam with Debo Samuel, Christian McCaffrey, George Kittle, wideout Brandon Ayuk, and Kyle Shanahan calling the plays. Fair point here. I could also say, imagine Justin Fields with these weapons. Imagine Jared Goff with these weapons. Imagine Kyler Murray with these weapons. Like, this is a very, very easy point to make. A reason I believe many see through Cam's rhetoric is, for one, via NBC Sports, Brock Purdy is playing his tail off this season. He leads the entire league in completion percentage, yards per attempt, passer rating, QBR, while piloting the Niners to a 10-win, 3-loss record. That puts them in the driver's seat for the number one seed in the NFC. 